Welcome to Your Strata Property, the podcast for property owners looking for reliable, accurate, and bite sized information from an experienced and authoritative source. Hello, and welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm your host, Strata lawyer Amanda Farmer, and my guests this week are Ada Wong and Susan Chen. Ada is the Resilience Coordinator at Lane Cove Council in Sydney. A trained professional engineer in the UK and Australia, Ada had a career change to the sustainability and resilience field five years ago. She has local government experience in Sydney and Perth in building community resilience, reducing council and community vulnerability to climate change and undertaking community development opportunities. Susan Chen is a Community Projects Officer at Willoughby City Council, also in Sydney. Susan holds a Master of Development Practice, Community Development, and a Master of Research in Human Geography. Susan is interested in all the ways that spaces and places can facilitate thriving communities. In this chat, Susan and Ada are sharing the results of their recent Community Wellbeing Survey, including the specific finding that led them to produce a Meet Your Neighbours toolkit for apartment residents. I'll take you over now to my chat with Ada Wong and Susan Chen. Enjoy. Susan Chen and Ada Wong, welcome to the show. Hi, Amanda. Happy to be here. Hi, Amanda. I'm Leda from Lankov. Ada, I'll go to you first. How did the idea for a Meet Your Neighbours toolkit come about? So we didn't actually just start it on the toolkit. This actually comes from the Meet Your Neighbours project that was funded by the Department of Prairie and Cabinet. Okay. And it's a joint project between Lane Cove Council and Willoughby City Council and also in partnership with the Red Cross as well. Both of our council actually look at any challenges that we had, like in our LGA, local government area. Both of us actually have uh, quite a lot of residents living in high-density area, like um, apartments. And while we're looking at the uh, well-being survey, both of our council did, we find that people living in apartments doesn't know their neighbour that well. They don't call, actually call the neighbour for help that often compared to people living in houses. They volunteer less. They are less connected to the community. So we thought that this would be an opportunity to do a pilot project. So this is a first of its kind, like uh, in the urban area that we're doing, uh, to connect with high-density living neighbours to improve social cohesion and resilience. So the social cohesion side we mentioned about, like people don't know their neighbor well. The resilience bit is mostly due with the, like, you know, we see like climate changes. We're getting a lot of extreme weather events. People doesn't really necessarily think about that it will affect apartment buildings at all or in the city area. But it doesn't mean that, like, you know, disaster or emergency doesn't happen in apartments. That's why it comes about of the project, both on both sides, social cohesion and also the resilient side. And at the moment, government actually focus about 97% of the funding on recovery, the aftermath of the like you know, any disaster emergencies. Only 3% is actually done like you know, in terms of building the resilience. That's why both of our council thinks that it's very important that we engage our residents, especially in our identity, in building resilience. Mm. You mentioned there, Ada, a wellbeing survey. Is that something that you did across the entire council area for all residents and it was the results you were getting back from the apartment residents that triggered this idea? Yes, it, we do it every two years so that we can see the trend of like, you know, how our residents actually, like, do they actually love living in the area? So it actually it's from the survey as well. Actually, it's through discussion with uh, Red Cross. So Lane Cove was actually doing a gap prepared workshop with a series of them with Red, Australian Red Cross. And we were discussing like, you know, how can we raise resilience in high density urban area? So Red Cross in the rural area, they 
called something called the Community Lab Resilience Teams that actually uh, neighbors get together and then they are direct contact with SES, uh, with the recovery agents or the comeback agents at the time of the uh, disaster. And then they decide on like on how, what do they want to improve on to reduce the impact when disaster happens. So um, this is something we, it's the pilot project that we're doing something in the urban setting as well. Mm, excellent. Do you want to jump in with anything to add there, Susan? Yeah, so as Ada mentioned, we wanted neighbours to get connected with each other to help them prepare for and respond to these challenges that we face in the community. And so having meaningful, trusting connections with your neighbours is really important because if something goes wrong, who are the people you turn to? It's actually the people closest to you, your friends, your family, your neighbours. So we wanted to build those connections between neighbours and in order to do that, we we ran this project and we delivered this toolkit. Mm. And we're going to get stuck into exactly what's in the toolkit and how our listeners can get their hands on it. But I'm really interested to hear that it's sounding to me like it was the apartment residents in particular who were saying to you that they felt disconnected from their neighbours. And am I right that you weren't really seeing that in the survey results for people who were living in freestanding homes? They felt more connected or they at least weren't telling you that they were disconnected in any way. And this was something that was really the case for apartment residents. And I find that interesting because as apartment residents, we're so close to our neighbours and we have so many of them and it's easy for us to just knock on the door, but that's not happening, your residents are telling you. Exactly. Um, So we could see in the survey results this disparity of outcomes. So we had that evidence. So things like if you live in an apartment, you're less likely to be connected to local community groups and less likely to volunteer in your community. You're less likely to be turning to your neighbours for help or offering help to your neighbours, these were things we could measure in the survey and we could see the difference between people who lived in apartments compared to people living in houses. I would say it's about 10% difference. Right, okay. Um, It's not like 50% difference, like that much, but there's still a gap. Mm -hmm. And was there any conclusions drawn as to why that might be the case, just different demographics or maybe a high proportion of renters? Any ideas about why you might have been seeing that difference? I don't think, we didn't do a study, like, you know, to deal with the reason why. But from our observation, like, you no know, statistics shows that people living in apartments are more socially diverse compared to people living in houses. There's definitely more renters. So they probably think that, you know, this is not something where I'm going to grow into. They might not be more invested in where they, what they live. And also that, actually, I live in an apartment myself. I find it hard to talk to neighbours is because like well, I think people living in houses, they got the front yard. You don't necessarily knock on your neighbor's door, but you you know, you see them in the gardens and then you see them enough and then you start talking to them. But in the hallway, I only see my neighbors like when I press the lift on the same floor, but it only happened in that one minute if we got at the same time in that one minute. Otherwise, I don't really see any of my neighbours at all. Mm, True. So we have the Meet Your Neighbours Toolkit, which has come about through the Meet Your Neighbours Project. This is a guide to creating friendly and resilient communities in apartment buildings in particular. I can see when I open up that guide and I look at the acknowledgements, there were a number of strata communities directly involved in putting the kit together, a number of building managers. How did you get these people on board? Did you handpick them out of the survey or how did they come to be involved in putting the kit together with you? Um, So we ran a pilot to trial it in a few buildings, so two buildings in the Willoughby Council area and three in the Lane Cove area. So we approached a few buildings. We wanted to get building managers and strata committees that were enthusiastic and happy to, to get on board with this project, and we knew that they would be key stakeholders as part of this project. Um, So we knew the success of the project relied on having them on board. 
So I did also approach some buildings that said no, that they weren't interested. So it was, for me, it was a matter of just finding buildings that were able to see the benefits of what this project could bring. Yeah. For Lane Cove, the three buildings, how we choose, actually we choose those buildings too. And the three buildings that we wanted to engage with, all of them say yes. So uh, the first one was uh, Savannah Apartments at Lane Cove North. Actually, I engaged with the building manager first because that's where the contact is. Like, you know, the council and the waste team actually have contact with the building manager to do with, like, you know, the waste stream. And then that building manager is very community-minded. And that was about post-COVID times. He see the need that his resident needed. And then he helped us to convince the strata as well. And then the other building we connected with Elena actually is they have the build, same building management. So that's how we got on to the, the second building. And the third building, Landmark Instant Land, that's, that's really like a landmark building, like more than 50 floor, very high density living at St. Leonard's, uh, 420 units. And both Elena and Landmark, because they are very new building, less than two years old. Both of the strata see the need that uh, their residents really wanted to connect. So that's why they wanted to work with us as well. And it's a council-sponsored project, so why not? (laughs) Yep, good on them. And what did they have to do to be involved in the pilot? What were you needing from them? So we got residents to get involved with planning and delivering their own neighbour initiatives. So we got a group of residents together, they met regularly, they worked together and put on different events and initiatives. They did neighbour barbecues, movie nights, cultural celebrations, anything to get neighbours together, to get them meeting with each other, chatting and connecting. Um, So some of those people were involved in their strata committee, um, but also others, including owners and non-owners, the idea was to make it as inclusive as possible. So they were, in essence, practising the activities that have now been put in the toolkit as recommendations for people to get to know their neighbours. And what was the feedback that you were getting from the communities? These were things that they hadn't done before, hadn't thought of before. What were the results when they started to give them a go? Yeah, it was all fairly new to those residents so a lot of them had been looking for opportunities to, to get to know their neighbours and they saw it as a great opportunity. And a lot of them have now made friendships and connections with people who they'd probably been living with for years but hadn't talked to before. You know, we're hearing stories about people who are now more comfortable to say hi to each other in the lifts because there's just a different atmosphere in the building. They know that it's a thing that's okay to do and they can see a familiar face and and say hi and it just changes the the general vibe in the building. So we've seen some pretty good outcomes and little stories like that from having these activities and initiatives. On the Lane Cove side is more council guided because it's more uh, to our resilience focus. So as well as having like, you know, those social connected gatherings, there are activities that guide residents to identify any hazards, safety risks, resilience risks, either physical infrastructure or they see like among the socially infrastructure as well that they identified as a community. We then help them to do a survey and then they send out to everyone to prioritize those issues. And then the residents come back to go together for another social gathering. And then they develop solutions for those priority re- resilience like uh, issues. And then now actually it's the stage that the strata committee is looking at those solutions. And with the grant funding from the department, how they are actually mitigating those resilience issues. So for example, resilience issues that um, some of the residents identified are vulnerable residents. They don't know about who they are. Like how about if there's like an evacuation, like an incident, like um, when the fire brigade comes, 
do I need to notify the fire brigade of who in my building that needs help? So apart from fire brigade, it will also be no like good to know that like you know the same for your neighbor. That's this gentleman that I need to help on like you know because he's like on, on a wheelchair, or that lady that couldn't hear very well and she wouldn't hear the fire alarm maybe from her from her bathroom, or this lady actually got pregnant just like a few months ago, that, you know, normally she's not vulnerable, but then being pregnant makes you vulnerable going down the stairs too. And all the pets that's been left alone, like in the building, that people really care about the pets. What happens if there's like an evacuation, like during the day, like the people know that their pets are actually in there, that new rescue. So those are the vulnerable we talk about, uh, but different buildings could have different issues. Like uh, it could be in the swimming pool, like some one of the buildings said that there's no like safety guard, like a filter guard. And then some of the kids actually caught the hand like in the swimming pool uh, filter. And then it could be like different rate, uh, like you know, at the gym or in the swimming pool. So those are some like safety issues that people might identify as well that uh, will actually bring to the strata and how could they improve. Nice one. And these buildings that are part of the pilot, did I hear you say that they're continuing to receive some funding to help them to put in place in their communities ways of dealing with these issues? Yes. Uh, so, for example, like identifying vulnerable, those are non-cost funding issues. You know, people can like you need to do a poster, maybe communications with your building itself, identify to your building manager, then you have the list. But funding, it could be like, you know, infrastructure that um, actually installed. It could be defibrator. And then there's uh, the landmark building actually identified that they want fire warden training for their residents. And then defibrator training as well, because they got one at the pool. It will be good to know what to use. So this kind of training is some social gathering as well as building your skills. And then they wanted to do like, you know, meet your strata today, um, going to do like maybe like uh, five floors at a time, uh, mini social gathering so that it's more intimate to know neighbors on your same floor. So a lot of the building do have a lot of focus on meeting your neighbors. Uh, maybe half of them is on meeting your neighbor and then the other half is uh, more infrastructure. Um, Our councils are looking at offering some small amounts of funding for buildings to get them started with um, their journey in in building friendly and more resilient communities. So right now we are offering a small funding program, but we are also asking residents to think about different ways that they can fund some of these projects themselves. So one of our trial buildings is now looking at putting some an allocation from their strata budget into a regular social event, for example. So while we do want to, as council, support strata communities in working on neighbour initiatives with some funding, and we are looking at current and future rounds of funding available from council, we also want residents and strata to think about other ways that they can fund these initiatives. Mm. And with the project, you've had a number of buildings blaze that trail and develop some examples of things that communities might be doing to increase engagement, increase resilience, assist vulnerable people. And that's all here in the toolkit, which is great. Now, this toolkit, am I right that it's available to everyone? It's on the website, it's accessible. And even if you're not a Willoughby or Lane Cove Council resident, you can take a peek at the toolkit and get some ideas from it for your community? Yeah, absolutely. So it's downloadable from both Willoughby and Lane Cove Council websites and hopefully the the resources and the advice and templates will still be useful to anyone who's looking at starting this in their own building. Yeah, Susan mentioned that like, the both of our uh, local government is giving up small grant to host their uh, neighbour party. So we're promoting this toolkit as well as a grant as well. So here's the grant to get you started. 
But at the same time, how about look at the toolkit? Like, you know, these are some of the ideas that you will get you going maybe after having your initial party. So the toolkit have, you know, they're organizing a barbecue. There's a barbecue checklist. There's a project plan. There is also like, you know, meet your neighbor card as well that they can actually use like bingo cards to actually use during the event. So that's what we're hoping that it's going to make it easy for people. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of things on the internet right now that you can download easily but it, these are like some of the examples that we thought that people are easily accessible to. It's a really good point because I do often hear about councils having opportunities for strata communities to access funding to do various things and a good example in recent years has been sustainability infrastructure and greening up your building but you do need to have before you can make that decision to access that kind of funding and get stuck into that kind of project, you do need to have that community already built and you need to be talking to your neighbours and you need to know what everybody wants and what is a priority for the community. So what I'm hearing is this is really that first step in that process. Yes, we want to do great things for our building or perhaps one person or a couple of people want to do great things for their building. How do they connect with others in the community to get their ideas and come together to choose which project you focus on and then work together to achieve that project. So I really like this gap that's been identified and this gap that's being filled by the toolkit. Exactly. And we, part of this project has been about building the capacity of these communities to work together. And a lot of the the buildings that I worked with, they kind of went on this journey of like learning how to work together as a team to, you know, to put on an event. They've um, built on all these little skills, like how to create a poster, how to promote something within their building. And then they've also established their own networks now. So they might now have an email list or a Facebook group or something that they didn't have before. And all of these things are really valuable, regardless of what project you want to do in your building. Yeah, definitely. So the toolkit is available to all and I will make sure that we have links in the show notes under this episode to both the Lane Cove Council website and the Willoughby Council website to access the toolkit. And then also Susan and Ada, I might get you to share with us any relevant links for residents in your particular areas where they may be able to access specific tools or grant applications that council has going at the moment and we'll make sure that those are shared. Any future plans for our apartment residents? What's next on the agenda for each of your councils? Um, so after the small grants given to the, like now, hosting the first party, then it's actually the first step of paving council's way into talking to, like, you know, keen residents and strata. And how can we using the toolkit to do more? Like, you know, the toolkit mentioned about setting up your hobby groups, activating, like, a communal space, uh, looking at resilience issue. So those are the, like, up of the first initial gathering, those are the things we wanted to talk to those keen residents and strata on how we can do this together. So the first stage is a lot of the free buildings that we're working with is a lot of council doing for them. So the next stage will be how can council assist the charter to do it for themselves. Yeah, so we're really in the early stages of this work. I feel like right now we're building relationships with some of the strata communities. Um, we're also building relationships with different stakeholders and organisations that are interested in this space as well. So we're also looking at working with specific groups like our multicultural or non-English speaking communities. We're looking at working with community housing providers um, so that we can kind of grow the work in this space as well. So there's plenty more to come in the future. Nice. Now, if we have strata managers, building managers, committee members who are in or working with buildings that are in the Lane Cove Council or the Willoughby City Council area and they want to connect with each of you and just make sure that they're on a mailing list, on a database, you want to know who's in your local area, where's the best place that they can go to get on that list or get on your radar? 
So for Willoughby Council, on the Willoughby Council website, uh, if you look up the High Neighbours program, that's HI, like High Neighbour, if you search for that, you'll find all the information on our program, including the toolkit. And there's also my contact information on that page. So please reach out and we're happy to chat to, to residents in apartment buildings. And for Lane Cove Council, uh, similarly, search on the website, but different title, like uh, Love Where You Live. That's where uh, the Meet Your Neighbour project comes under. So it will have similar information as per Willoughby. Excellent. We'll make sure that we have those links in the show notes. Jump in, Ada, you were going to say something else? And both of us actually did uh, a webinar on um, explaining you know, what we just told you about our, uh, both of our projects as well, as well as talking about the uh, toolkit a bit. So the webinar is actually half an hour, like Alpha Link of is actually uh, on the webpage as well, if those wanted to know more about the project. Excellent. We'll make sure that's all available. Thank you, Susan Chen and Ada Wong, both for your hard work in putting this project together, delivering it, working with our strata communities and not forgetting about those of us who live and work and serve our strata communities, recognising that difference in the survey results, recognising that there's something going on here in apartment buildings that needs more attention and putting the time and the energy into producing the toolkit. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to what's coming next. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks so much, Amanda. Thank you for listening to Your Strata Property, the podcast which consistently delivers to property owners reliable and accurate information about their strata property. You can access all the information below this episode via the show notes at www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. You can also ask questions in the comments section, which Amanda will answer in her upcoming episodes. How can Amanda help you today?